I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. We are from Freezer Meals 101. I had an idea that I wanted to show you the versatility of rotisserie chicken when it comes to freezer cooking. So um, I bought six rotisserie chickens yesterday and I have all these recipes you can make with shredded chicken that we're gonna turn this into and they can be freezer meal recipes. But then I was talking to Christy and telling her that I actually have not used rotisserie chicken myself. I don't know how to shred them. <laughs> so. So I said, you know, Charlotte, I've done this a lot. So I'm going to come over. I'll do a little cameo for y'all today. And I'll show you how to do both. To If you want to piece it out and take it off the bone and chop it if you wanted to make chicken salad or something that's going to require it chunky, but also to show you how to shred it because really that one you just take a fork and you, you shred it. But we'll get you through it all today. <laughs> I'll get her through it all today. <laughs> so Christy's going to teach you as she teaches me and then I will attempt to do the rest of the chickens while she goes back to work. My day job. <laughs> I'm on assignment. <laughs> <laughs> this is her lunch break, so I super appreciate her <laughs> coming to rescue me from this. Um, and we live close yeah. by, so I could just meep, walk over. Oh. It was good. All right, you're up. All right, so first we take the chicken. Do you want your chicken? Oh, yes. You get to have one. I'm going to learn how to do this. Oh, so you can open things better than me. Um, so typically, because they're a little bit messy, I leave it right in there sometimes and start from there. Um, rotisserie chickens come with a little string on it, depending on where you buy it, I guess. And so we pull the string off. You, are you going to put your gloves on? Yeah. Okay. She's going to put gloves on because that's how she feels about touching meat sometimes, <laughs> which I understand, but I'm over it. I can't get the string off though. Whoever wrapped the strings at Costco on the chicken. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so rotisserie chicken in a lot of places is actually cheaper. Oh, they tied two on here, maybe. Than, they, there's two. Um, it's cheaper <laughs> than buying um, a whole chicken sometimes, depending on, you know, what ha the cost in your area. I've heard that in the US, in a lot of areas, you can buy rotisserie chickens for $5. These were $7.99 and we're up in Canada and that's about as, I mean, maybe they go on sale. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. But, oh. you know, um, but a lot of times rotisserie chicken is cheaper than buying a whole chicken, cooking it yourself, and then shredding or cubing or cutting it or whatever. So check out the prices in your area and if it's less expensive to do it this way and then it cooks it for you, it saves you a step. So yay, save time and money, yay. Uh, so I always start with taking off the legs, the drumsticks, as the professionals call it. Um, Ooh, but really, they're legs, we know. Um, you can do it like Swiss salad style and do the whole quarter chicken if you want. Are you watching this over here? <laughs> okay. And, and if you care, I'm using a boning knife because boning knife has a little bit of flexibility and you can get in and around a bone. Um, it can be used for raw meat, it can be used for fish, it can be used for what we're doing here. So because they're so tender, the way they rotisserie them, once you cut down, yeah, you can just kind of leverage it here and cut through, watch, and just kind of rip it off, for real. Okay, you made that look easier than I'm making it look. So there's gonna be little bits and bobs here. Whoops. That we can that we can pull off um something i was talking to charlotte about and okay i don't know if you keep the skin or if you don't keep the skin you can definitely use it in your um, broth so if you don't want to put your skin in actually with your shredded chicken that's is that what we're doing here okay that's our broth pot that's our broth pot um on the back side of the chicken there's really good meat there and it's very tender the tenderest spot on the back of this chicken are these little pockets of back meat right here. And th my secret is, and now you all know, those don't actually even make it into the chicken salad because I usually eat them because it's the best part and it's called chicken tacks. It's, 
Like if, if somebody posts about their dog, everybody's like, dog tax, we wanna see a picture of your dog. Well, this is the chicken tax. I'm gonna tell you about the chicken and then I might eat that little part. So I'm just gonna take the rest of the skin off there. But we can leave th that there. And I'm gonna move that. And the gelatin that comes off, that's part of your flavor, right? That can go in with your bones and, and stuff too. So I really just use hey, my where hands. Where did you find your back? Oh, Wait. yeah, whoops. So let's take some of the skin off here. Okay. And, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and yeah. so you can do it with your knife or you can do it with your thumb. Okay. So I'm gonna set this aside now that I got my back pieces off and I'm gonna continue on with the rest of my chicken thigh. So at this point, I really just use my hands. So if you wanna shred it, you can shred it by hand right now as you pull it off into little bits, or you can try your best to pull it off in bigger chunks like this that you can then dice up. Okay. Okay? Yep. <laughs> You're doing great over there. This is me getting my chicken lesson. I'm way slower, but that's okay because this just shows you that when you're starting, you, it's okay to be slower. And then as you get to be like a veteran chicken terror apart, yeah, that. Um, and why I also it. like to do it by my hands is there was a piece of tissue there, like uh, maybe it's a piece of bone on some connective tissue that I'm gonna just pull off. I don't, I don't want that piece. So into the pot it goes. So the great thing about these chickens is it's going to give us a lot of bone and skin and little bits that we can turn into a chicken stock and then yay, that can be frozen too. So I will probably do another video on how to make homemade chicken stock and freeze it. And then you can use that instead of having to buy chicken stock and nice and homemade. And you know what went in it and uh, you can also control the sodium levels and whatever other vegetables or whatever you put in there. So it's okay. a good deal. I'm gonna point out on the drumstick, you always get this little piece of tendon that sticks into the end. It just kind of is rubbery, it's not nice to eat. Oops, so that part, that's just fat. I'm gonna put that in there. So I always, I pinch it off with my thumb or you can cut it and, and it's consistent. It's always there on a drumstick. So I get rid of that. Okay. It's like eating an apple pie and getting a piece of core that got missed because oh, yeah. it was machine done or that's nothing changes your mind in a hurry <laughs> about a pie <laughs> than finding a chunk of core in there. And so I'm literally just cleaning it off with my hands for the drumstick. I'll go back to using the knife in a sec, but we're gonna finish that uh, drumstick and uh, thigh there oh, I with my the hands. Oh, I found the part. Yeah. This thing, maybe. Yeah, okay. Drumstick. <laughs> now, is that super clean? Yeah, it's pretty clean, it's, it's all right. Oh, so to pull these apart, I just, I literally, thigh in this hand, drumstick in this hand, I went rip and I pulled that joint apart. Okay. And so now I have a drumstick and I have a thigh. Mine is not going to be like that. It's just going to be skin in the pot. Chicken goes here, icky bits go here. Icky bits. <laughs> Stop saying icky bits. All the part of the chicken is wonderful. There's no icky bits on a chicken. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> first started filming and she would say I'm gonna de yuckify the chicken I'm like stop calling the food yucky like <laughs> that puts things in people's minds that's I'm not gonna de yuckify it chicken is not yucky we're it's... gonna process the chicken oh yeah process oh I cracked something you did it <laughs> so, you pulled it apart sorry, that little chicken. bone just pops it's okay. all good see a nice big chunk of thigh that I'm gonna be able to chop later and I've got, there's the, there's the socket for that bone. So I was a science nerdy kid when I was little. I'm still a bit of a science nerd mom. And so when I get a turkey or something, like a fresh turkey that has giblets, I dig through them. And if there's a heart, 
I will take my kids and show them the ventricles. And I have dissected the heart before because because I was I had just finished doing similar stuff in school and that was really cool. Um, so I don't get grossed out easily. This stuff doesn't bother me at all. She's a farm kid. I grew up on a farm. <laughs> I I knew that chicken. <laughs> I had a rooster that chased me. His name was, we had two, uh, Sam and Morton. They were only banties, so they were teeny tiny, but they were fierce. They were, they were like, you know how like little dogs think that they're Rottweilers kind of thing? Banties are like that, if you aren't aware. They're small chickens and they have the spurs on them. They're the ones that they'll use for fighting, which is not nice, but it's because they're feisty. And, um, and I, one started chasing me. And that's it. Once a chicken decides to chase you, they are terrifying, especially when you're only like seven or four or whatever, or 40. Yeah, <laughs> scary. I'm like, I would be scared. <laughs> and, and, um, so it never got better. It didn't get better. It never got better. So finally, my dad took care of the situation in the farmer way. <laughs> and, Bye, Morty. and that was the end of Sam and Morton. And, oh, um, but I, they have beautiful tail feathers. So, um, my dad kept the tail feathers for me and they are in my scrapbook Aww. from when I was a kid. It's kind of a... And he did tell us who we were eating that night for supper. That usually wasn't a topic of conversation, but that did happen that time. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't usually, it's not polite to talk about who you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know what you're going to get on these videos. <laughs> never polite to talk about who you're eating. No. no. That's a good point. Um, okay, I'm ready to move on to the breast. Okay. So I'm going to wait for you if no, you want to keep okay. doing that. And I can just chop this up no. while we wait. Okay, sure. It, do you have a plan for chopped chicken or do you want me to shred it? Just shred it all. Just That's good. toss it all in the bowl. Oh, there's that tendon really piece. Slow. I missed it. Ooh. I thought I had it. I'm not missing anything because I'm so meat paranoid. So when we do our big batches of freezer meals, I am typically the person who trim does the trimming of the chicken. Trimming of the chicken. Trimming. Okay. Yeah. Of the raw chicken, especially the thighs, because it does take a little bit of time. And and I mean, when you're honestly, if you're butchering mass amounts of chickens, you're gonna miss pieces. That's the way it is. So you're gonna, you know, we usually buy boneless, skinless thighs. Um, the butcher is going to miss pieces of bone or, or tissue that you maybe don't want in there. Excuse me a second. I'm going to grab a fork and then I'm going to continue my story. And, and so just to make it nice, we, we pop it out before we, before we put the chicken into the bags. So that uh, often is my job because I'm a little faster at it because maybe I'm not as Squeamish. Squeamish. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but this is actually, I mean, it's pretty beautiful chicken, really. It's great. Especially considering what we paid for it. Like It's very good. Maybe um, we'll make freezer meals from rotisserie chicken more often. Or maybe not. I don't know. I, I think... Maybe one time it would be worth weighing how much cooked chicken we get out of it versus how much we would get out of a package of breasts or thighs or something and decide cost wise. Yes. What, is it worth it? Because, okay, do you all know the trick about how to shred chicken quickly in your yeah. mixer? If you, but it works better with a slow cooker because it's super tender. So you cook your chicken in the slow cooker until it's like falling apart almost already. And then you put it in your mixer with your paddle attachment and turn it on for two minutes on low. It just pulls it apart so nicely. And it, it's a lot less hands-on. Um, but it's consistent. It does a good job. Um, if you leave it too long, it could beat it to a mash. I mean, nobody wants mashed chicken. But it's, but it's convenient. It does work really well. Just so you know. Ew. Ew? Come on. Sorry. Yay. <laughs> I got a bone <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to learn to face.
face my fears. <laughs> How do you eat? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a friend. I'm going to give a shout out to my friend Katie, who is the same. She has to wear the gloves. She, um, she will Lysol wipe her entire kitchen down after cooking with chicken. And she will cook chicken to the point where if it's not served with water, I will just go and get my own water because <laughs> it dries it out. She'll overdo it because she is just terrified of it being undercooked. And, and I mean, I've known her. I met her when our daughters are the same age. So I met her around just before our daughters were born. And uh, so we're going on 13 years now and she's never changed. That is how she cooks chicken. And do you know, she's actually a really good cook, but I do have a chuckle. And it's like, I'm not just making fun of Katie because I love her. It's, it's common knowledge that she overcooks chicken <laughs> and it comes up. But do you know what? When somebody's cooking you a meal, you just shut up and eat it. And it's <laughs> great. They're the people that I have my cheesecake conversation with. The ones oh, I lied yeah. to about the cheesecake for years. I don't like cheesecake. I know it's kind of weird. I just never have. I don't like cream cheese when it's sweet and I don't like the texture of it. There's just, it's not my thing. I like other desserts, but I don't like that. So the first time we ever got together, is it okay that I'm telling stories? Yes. So the first time we ever got together with them, Adam and Katie, love these guys. And I should have given them pseudonyms. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I tell everybody the story. It doesn't matter. Um, and, and they know the story. First time we ever got together, the kids, the girls were little and they phoned and said, we're going to Costco, we'll pick up, they're coming to our house, we'll pick up a dessert, what do you like? And I'm like, ah, we like anything, just come, whatever, <laughs> whatever you bring is fine. So they show up with a cheesecake. So I said, oh look, a cheesecake, that's so nice. And when it was time to have dessert, I ate the cheesecake and that was fine. And then everybody wanted a second piece and I had pie instead because my father-in-law had been over earlier in the day and brought a pumpkin pie, which I could eat the entire thing of if instead of cheesecake. And I um, had pie. So the next time we got together, it was at their house. And guess what she made? She made cheesecake because the first one was a roaring hit. And I'm like, oh. Katie, this is the best homemade cheesecake I've ever had. <laughs> it was true, because I had probably had like three in my life, and it was the best one. It was flavorful. It was just not my thing. And then, say, six months later, we get together at a mutual friend's house. And my husband and I had gotten there earlier, and they came in packing their baby and packing probably a cheesecake for dessert to bring something for the potluck. And... I said, guys, I have a confession to make. I'm really sorry to tell you this, but I don't like cheesecake. I've been lying to you for six months. <laughs> and Adam looked at me and he said, oh, well, I see you like Caesar salad. So I guess we'll just have that next time. <laughs> and so ever since then, anytime we get together, somebody always volunteers to bring the cheesecake and makes a big joke about it because I don't like cheesecake. And we still have cheesecake, I just don't eat it, and it's okay. I, I don't have to eat dessert, I'm okay. Sometimes. You know, when I first met Christy, she told me she doesn't like cheesecake. And um, I thought, well, she just hasn't had my cheesecake. You did not. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> and so, one of the first times we ever had them over, not the first time, but like one of the first times we ever had her and her husband over, I made my cheesecake because I think it's really good. It probably is actually Which is really funny because you're not even a dessert person. No. That's I the hilarious like dessert. part. That's and so funny. So, um... It's probably really good cheesecake. <laughs> but, Did I eat it? Well... You tried it, and then you were like, I gotta be honest with you, I just don't like cheesecake. <laughs> anyway, we're so done. I have never done it since. Um, okay, what do I do now? Okay, I'm gonna, oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna wipe my hands. See, I got her talking, and then I caught up, sort of. I think that's usually how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Next. 
This is the part where the boning knife comes in handy. So if you want to wait, That's I'll okay. give it to you. So right down the middle of the chicken is going to be, there's a bone right there. And there's a pocket of chicken breast on this side and a pocket of chicken breast on this side. So what we want to do with our knife is go down and kind of dig a little deep and cut it right close to the bone and pop this out like a pocket. So I'm gonna, so imagine that the bone is right in the middle there. I'm gonna kind of keep my knife just to the side of it. And if you get good at it, you'll, you'll feel it there. And then you're gonna just kind of work it down and on an angle. And you can pull on the chicken breast and see how close you're getting there until you have it kind of coming off. Oh, I can pull it away from there now because I was getting into the wing area. And there's one chicken breast. Cool. Yeah, and then you can and you can do the same thing on the other side because now we have that midpoint. We know where that, that breastbone is. Weird. Yeah. And see my slight, <laughs> slight bend. <laughs> it didn't know what you doing it. it. Come on. You're doing it. it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Everybody rest ish. Everybody needs a cheerleader. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh my goodness, it's 1237. I'm over my, time. My clock is fast. Right. You're so She's one of those day. people. Yeah? Yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm proud of it. And I've known you for how long and I keep forgetting. So I'm gonna go back to my hands and we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna, those little extra pockets that we missed first round, you can pull out. Okay, now are there tendony yucky bits that no. I need to be aware of uh, in the not, breast? No, sometimes if you cut too deep, you get the bone. Oh, here's, here's the wishbone. Oh yeah. Yeah. My kids like those. Well. Good thing you have a lot of kids because you got six wishbones coming right up. <laughs> this is, they are actually, each chicken is kind of making a fair amount of chicken. Oh, like, yeah. They look little, but no, there's, there's a lot there. chicken on them. There's a lot there. What do I do with this wing? There's, there's meat there. There's not a lot because they're small chickens, but you can just okay, pull it off. You can just pull it off. Look at the carnage. And then mm -hmm. kind of do the same thing that we did with the, the bone and, or the drumstick in the thigh. We just kind of pick out the good stuff and throw the rest in your in your pot for the stock. I feel like I just want to throw the whole thing in the stock. There's not much. Here. There isn't much there. You really could and it would be fine. But I'm determined to get like one little baby piece off or something. Sure. Strong thumbs. Just kind of dig right in there and rip it out. You could use a knife to do this. I'm just choosing to use my hands because they're already sticky. Not sticky, but chicken. <laughs> now who's talking about chicken in a yucky way? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how do you get the wishbone out? Oh, I just think I just answered my only question. Well, your wishbone is here. Oh. This so you have to do the other side. This yet. isn't a wishbone? Nope. Oh. <laughs> I have so much to learn. You're so cute. <laughs> okay. It's, oh, I don't know what this is. It's wishbone-like. Maybe it was a rib. Okay. So now I'm going to, I am going to cut one for the camera, but I know you want it shredded, but you're going to get one that's cut. Anyway. Um, I'm, I'll just trim it up here. And you can just slice in. Now, if you are doing this while it's still hot, it's hard to do because your hands hurt. But if you wanted to just buy your rotisserie chicken and serve it up and, and piece it out, just like that, you would do the same thing with the breasts. You can. Um, and where you cut off, where we cut off the drumstick and the thigh and did the quarter chicken. And I kind of made, oh, oh, see, I had a little chunk of bone there and I can feel it. So that goes in the pot. 
I made the little joke about our Swiss chalet chicken because that's the quarter chicken with the drumstick and the thigh like that. Um, and I think the Swiss chalet ones actually have a piece of back on it too. I'm not 100%. Um, but you can just cut it off like that and place it on a plate. Somebody will pick it up and eat it. Uh, then, and you can cut the wings off um, and have, somebody can try to eat them. But like you said, there's not a lot of meat on there. I'm going to cut the very tip of that breast off because that one is a little bit... That's the connective tissue there, right? And so I'm just going to cube this. And I was able to keep the skin on because yum. <laughs> and when I do them with a hot chicken, I still will flip it over and get that piece out of the back first before anybody's watching me do it because it is the best. <laughs> see, I kept one of my back pieces to the side so, so that, that I can try it and see if yeah. it really is delicious. It's delicious. Okay. It really is. Oh, this is a nice chicken. Do another wing. So we have a bit of cubed and a bit of shredded. And, but I gotta head back to work and I'm really sad about that because I'm injured. Well, Ooh, you're not gonna see the beautiful meals I have planned, but I'll I will watch your video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, actually, I'll tell you about them. But yeah, um, tell me. So we're gonna do a sriracha rice dish that uses leftover rice, which I happen to have. Okay. And um, we're going to do a Mexican taco <laughs> pasta. <laughs> I'm just throwing them in there. I'm going to shred them later. What? I was standing here shredding this. <laughs> well, you know, just to make it faster. <laughs> she can and, shred it. Oh, we're going to do tostada filling. Tell me about that. So that okay, so it's gonna it has like cream cheese and the chicken and I mean, mango salsa and jalapenos, and then you serve it on tostadas with like shredded lettuce and um, tomatoes and cheese, and it's gonna be amazing. So yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna do that Ooh. filling. We should probably next freezer meal session add that to okay. our list. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we also have to talk about our competition we're going to have with the sides. Ooh, Should we do yes. that while I'm here? Before I go? <laughs> I don't want to cut you off from your no. awesome list. because I... I'll get back to my list later. She'll just have to watch the video to I'll see what I mean. Video. <laughs> oh, um, um, hiding under the wing here, there is more back meat, by the way. Like, there was that awesome pocket that we popped out, but then here's more back meat. Eat it. It's good stuff. Super tender. Oh, but really feel around for bones because the ribs are there and stuff. Okay, continue. Um, we Yeah, okay, so Christy and I have this idea. I think it's going to be really fun for you. Uh, well, it'll be fun for us. I hope it'll be fun for you. That we're going to pick some of our freezer meals that are done and just sitting, waiting in our freezer. And we're going to pick some that we both have left, obviously. We're going to pick three. And then... Um, we're gonna kind of do battle of the sides. Like, I'm not gonna tell her what side dishes I'm making. She's not gonna tell me what side dishes she's making. We're each gonna film what we served with the freezer meal. And uh, then, I guess, if you want, you can vote and see who's better. Yeah, we did, we're not truly <laughs> very competitive <laughs> no. people, so this isn't like, there's and no bragging rights here. This is gonna be mutual admiration society <laughs> kind of thing is what this will be because, yeah, and it just because we're both good cooks. Yes. She's a good cook. I'm a pretty good cook. It's interesting. Uh, I'm talking us up. You're going to watch this video and be like, that's terrible. I'd have never made it with that. But because <laughs> you all sound like that. No. That's a great idea, though, because we do have enough freezer meals still left from our big, huge 150 meal session. You're ahead of me on meals, though, now that you're making your videos more regularly, though. Yeah, I maybe have. I'll just buy some off you. <laughs> Too many meals now, but um, it's a good problem to have. Trust me, very happy problem to have. But uh, but I think with the this battle of the sides, it'll also give you like a better idea of the kind of variety that you can do with freezer meals and kind of the freedom that it affords you because you can still be creative when you make the sides. Now, honestly, I think Christy's better at sides than I am. There's some things about cooking that I'm maybe better at kind of 
when we're like on the fly and we have extra ingredients and we have to invent recipes. Because did you invent the tostada? Um, I kind of adapted a couple of recipes she at it together. So, you guys saw the soup video, right? Where she took all the leftovers from freezer meals for the week and made soups. And like, oh, these flavors are go-go together. I'm not good at that. I don't have much of a sense of smell. Therefore, I have, don't have much of a sense of taste. So I just smile a lot and smile and <laughs> nod and say, yeah, that sounds good. And it is. It is totally good, but not the same way that she thinks something is totally good, I think. Just because you, you have that, that chef's palate, maybe. Well, I do like to eat. <laughs> So I like to eat too. I'm not that picky. <laughs> no, because <laughs> I can't. Because I can't taste it the same way. No, as I'm sitting All right. here, like I am gonna throw this in there because, because I gotta go. I'll feel if there's any bones, and then we're good. Like, oh, do you want me to skin it if I'm gonna? Yeah, sure. Okay. You know how to make a good stock, right? Do I have to come back? Yeah, you, you have to come back. <laughs> I'll come back and show you how to make chicken stock <laughs> on tomorrow's video. <laughs> <laughs> you can put it in at the end. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I would totally I would totally do that. Okay, well we're gonna keep the um I'm oh. not gonna say the yucky bits. We're gonna keep the carcasses in here. How are you feeling about this? And I'm, it's going in. Yeah. We're gonna keep all the carcasses in here and Christy's gonna come back another day and um you can tomorrow freeze that. in our time, not tomorrow in your time, because it'll take me longer than that to edit the videos. The magic but, of video. Yeah, tomorrow in our time. And she will um, make a beautiful chicken stock, and then we'll freeze it. And, uh, yeah, or maybe I'll just give this to her, and she can film it at her house if I she do wants that too. to, if it's easier. And I'm going to tell you something else. If you want to... You make turkey dinner for Christmas or for Thanksgiving or something and you have the carcass and it's all there but you've just had two huge days of cooking and you're looking at that thinking I don't have it in me to make the carcass right now or to make it stock right now put the whole thing in your freezer you just took a giant turkey out you have room in your freezer put that in your freezer in the turkey hole and you do it a week later when you got time and that you have the energy to do it the only thing about that is it is nice to have the peelings, like your carrot right. peelings and your onion bits and right. and everything that you want to put in the stock. You probably have those all available. Do you know what? Throw this in there too. You can freeze them. Who cares? That's true. Those yeah. do all freeze. What the heck? Yeah, and then and then make your stock and and go from there. Yeah, I would make I would make stock. Okay. On, on video for you. <laughs> Assignments from Charla. Okay, I really have to go because now it says 12.48 and I really will have to go back to work. Okay, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for the help. This is, you know, just another day in our week, right? Okay, and you can't fit all of your chickens in there or you won't have any room for your stock. You okay. might need to make two stocks. Yeah. I would max out at three and then okay. you have another big pot and do three more. That's a good point. <gasps> Then I could do one and you could do one and we could compare oh stocks. Oh my goodness, no, I'm not good at the stock. We're not, not in a competitive way, <laughs> in a, you know, like this way where I show you. I don't know. Okay, okay. we can clean I'll, that I'll up consider better. It. You'll consider it. Yeah. You're awesome. I never found my Okay, bye like guys. That. I'll see you next time. Good luck with this. <laughs> I'm going to go wash my hands. Bye, everybody. <laughs> see you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. So, um, we did two. I only have four more. <laughs> that kind of sounds like a lot right now, but it's okay because I'll speed through this next bit so you don't have to watch like every little thing about that. And um, when we're done, I'll shred the chicken in the bowl here and then um, I will, ooh look, now I got myself a second cutting board to use kind of on the side here. Um, Okay, and then I will um, turn those into some actual freezer meals with the shredded chicken.
I am halfway done. I'm gonna switch out the stock pot, get going on the other ones. I feel like Christy was better at getting like more of the meat off the chicken, but maybe that just comes with practice. So I'm gonna keep working on it. Obviously this is new to me too. I did decide that I'm actually going to make a completely separate video where I show you all the freezer meals that I'm going to make with this rotisserie chicken. This bowl is going to be like heaping. I might need to get a second bowl because it's since I'm only halfway. But anyway, um, I'm going to do a separate video of that because there might be people like Christy who already know how to shred a rotisserie chicken and so they won't need to watch this video they can just start with the second video where the chicken is already shredded and we're turning it into meals so anyway I'm going to just finish things up here finish these three shred the chicken and we will be done and we can move on to recipes <music> Be sure to join me for that video and watch the video of Christy turning the carcasses into stock and see how you can freeze your own homemade chicken stock. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe if you're looking for lots of great freezer meal ideas and uh, this has been fun as usual so happy cooking! <laughs>